everyone. Namaste. I'm Jill Loftus of New at Astrology. Welcome to your planetary energy forecast for the week of November 28th, 2022. There's actually some sweet astrology this week, which I'm really liking. We are starting to pick up, and in fact, it comes into precision, a beautiful trine between Mars in Gemini and the Saturn in Aquarius. Um, I, I, this is so helpful, right? <laughs> Finally, after all that um, difficult energy going from the Neptune in Pisces up to the Mars in Gemini, now it gets a nice boost, a nice boost from that Saturn down there in Aquarius, right? This is a forward thinking energy. This is really in play this week, but because of the Saturnian delay, I tend to think that um, it will fire a little later and you'll be dealing with it clear, you know, all the way through the this week and, and, and into the beginning of December, right? So think about how you can really harmonize those two areas of life, the Gemini and the Aquarius areas of life. This is a um, an energy that really is about the collective, lots of conversations, lots of ideas, big ideas, which I'm really liking. Another thing that's going to lend itself to the big ideas is that we have Mercury and Venus coming together in Sagittarius. They're gonna to be together all week, basically kind of holding hands, but they will be standing across the sky from that Mars and Gemini, right? And so they're gonna be bringing in this Capricornian element of like, hey, give me the facts. Is it real? Is it practicable? Practical? Is it doable? You know, don't be just over here in Gemini full of your ideas, right? And anytime you get the Mars Venus tension going, right, that can also introduce some, you know, a little bit of a power struggle of, of sorts. But really, the answer this week is be Capricornian about it. Like, just do the work, follow the structure, play by the rules, or as the Dalai Lama said once, um, know the rules uh, so that you can break them properly, right? Because sometimes forgiveness is easier to get than permission. All right. On the 28th, um, I'm also liking Venus and Capricorn is trining down to that Chiron in Aries. That Chiron is finally picking up a few really nice um, beams of energy as we get into December. So as we wrap up the month, it, it, it's making that beautiful connection with Venus, right? And I really see this as like, you know, Venus and Capricorn is like, put your money where your mouth is. Like, you know, show me, show me how you're using your resources. Show me that, um, you know, that what you love is also what you are actually doing, right? Like, you know, love through acts of service, love through, you know, practicality, a uh, reality, um, you know, really structuring it. So this might be a really marvelous time to work on healing. Um, you know, that Chiron and Aries can bring up issues of independence, um, issues of anger. There might be some real good opportunities for you this, this, uh, this week. All right. Um, on the 29th, we have the exact Mercury-Mars opposition. They're sending blessing beams down to the Saturn, right? Saturn is our friend this week. Saturn is the good guy. Um, I just did a video on Saturn, so be sure to check that out. Um, you know, it's, it's going to show you the way forward. You may not like it all the way. It might be a little more work than you had planned, right? Your, your grand ideas. But um, I think there's some positive energy here. Now, Venus and Mercury are close together. They're about 18, 20 Sag, um, you know, in that range um, across from that Mars in 19, in 19 uh, Gemini and, you know, still sending that sextile down to the Saturn. So, you know, again, do things that are in alignment with what you want, right? You can't be complaining about social media and then spend three hours a day on it, right? You cannot complain about gas prices and then drive frivolously. I mean, we all have to drive. It's the United States. We don't have good infrastructure. We just don't have good public transportation. But, you know, if you're railing about having too much stuff, look at your Christmas shopping and instead purchase experiences for people and not things, right? Align your values with your actions. All right. And then December the 1st is a huge astrological day. There's just an enormous amount of energy happening. And it's not, you know, is it good? Is it bad? It's just a lot. So don't overschedule yourself on uh, the 1st. Um, and there's a lot of moon energy too. So cancer people, you just got to be a little bit more care cautious and careful. And there's just going to be a lot of emotions, right? And you can tap into that intuition or you can like drown in it, right? So choose. <laughs> 
All right, we've got the Venus now in stepping into that direct opposition with the Mars, that Venus-Mars tension, right? We've got the Mercury and Sagittarius squaring down to the Neptune. This is confusion, delusion. You know, I want to do this, not sure what to go, right? Um, definitely issues with media. I mean, I've been watching all these, this Mars, Neptune square with everything that's been going on with it, like Twitter and things. It's sometimes astrology is just amusing. <laughs> it's just all it is. Um, all right. And then the Pisces, the moon is going to be in Pisces. And between the 30th and the 1st, it's going to square everything. <laughs> it squares the Mars, squares the Venus, squares the Mercury. Then it's going to hit the Neptune. Then it's going to sextile the Pluto. Um, and then touch the Jupiter. And then move into Aries, right? So that whole, you know, that whole, you know, Piscean moon thing. It's just like, wow, I'm just kind of like swimming through the fog of, of all this, you know, kind of like Capricornian, like, do this, do that, rules, whatever. So, you know, slow it down a little bit. Understand that you're like, you know, sweet inner self might be feeling a little overwhelmed and tap into that sextile, you know, tap into that sextile um, to Pluto, which means, you know, be okay with change, right? Be okay with change. There's a, also a really nice Venus and Sagittarius sextile to the Saturn and Aquarius that day as well to help you ground down and moderate. All right, on the December 2nd, the moon is gonna be in Aries now and it's gonna try in the sun and Sag. I'm liking this for an intuitive guide to move forward. You got all that information yesterday, kind of like, you know, everything got shuffled and now it's like, ah, I know where to go, I know what to do, and I like that. On December 3rd, December 3rd, um, we have Neptune stationing direct. Now when these big, transpersonal outer planets that move so slow when they station retrograde or direct these are days that we pay attention to these days are like branding irons they seal information right and so symbolically what happens that day in the collective what happens with neptune ruled things like mysticism spirituality uh media the the arts right um music, movies, um, delusion, you know, confusion, drugs, things that obscure, things that make it look better than it really is, right? Things that make it look worse than it really is. That's something to pay attention to. It's at 22 degrees of Pisces if you know your chart and can pay attention to what it's up to there. That moon in Aries is going to sextile the Mars and Gemini. Nice. So that's like a little bit of like a, you know, because the moon is in Aries, which is Mars sign, right? So that's kind of a nice little flow. Um, and also sextile the Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn, I'm telling you, Saturn's our friend this week. It's going to try in the Venus and Mercury and Sag, right? So I like this energy for taking action. This is like, like I said, the, even the day before, like you're going to get this like, mm, this is what I need to do. Good for it. Good for, good for moving forward. As we wrap up the week on December the 4th, Venus and Sagittarius is going to square to the Neptune and Pisces. Um, and then the moon in Aries is going to square Pluto and Capricorn. So this could be delusion. Um, don't overspend and be really careful with love, romance. I'd be careful with financial things. There could be this like, you know, um, I have a saying that sometimes you have to throw money at things to solve problems. This could be a day that you throw too much money at the problem. <laughs> you know, that Venus and Sag, it's like, yes, well, let's, you know, whatever. That trip's only $5,000, yeah, sure, book it. Wait, 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 okay? Um, you know, that moon, square the Pluto. You know, you'll know whether some of those decisions, those actions, those intuitive things that you were like feeling driven to do earlier in the week, whether they can make it through the Capricornian uh, uh, structure test, right? Um, so interesting start to the month. All right, um, do check out the December forecast. I do have that posted. We are wrapping up this year very rapidly. I am working on a 2023 forecast. It's going to be brief um, because I'm busy. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate your patience. Let's, um, let's check out and see what the tarot has to say about the week. Okay, friends, hi there. Here's the tarot, uh, the Lotus Tarot spread for the astrology. Planetary Energy forecast week of November 28th, end of November into early December. Let's see what uh, the best ways to approach this energy will be. There are two options given in this Lotus Isis tarot spread. 
Be quiet for just a moment so I can tune in, please. Thank you. All right, ready to roll. First card is the influence of the past. So the past influence here is Page of Cups, pursuit of things that fill your cup, trying to find emotional happiness, okay? You may have been playing by a rule book in life where you were doing what you thought you should do and you figured out that you weren't happy. And so now you, you've been in this, in this realm of like, wow, what is really going to make me feel happy and excited and want to live this life of mine? You right now are the fool. Now, some people might say that the fool is foolish, but the fool understands the infinite nature of the universe. The fool is a manifester, right? See how he juggles all his zodiacal signs. See how his number is zero. He's the beginning of, you know, the absolute beginning of the, the tarot deck. He shows that there is infinite possibilities. And so put on your possibility goggles for the week. Your environment that you're working within, well, interesting, this was a card that came up from last week. Uh, you're feeling this lack. There's either financial lack, financial struggles, um, concern about money, concern about fitting in, about being accepted. Um, so, you know, you're kind of in this environment of feeling like the outsider, which, you know, the fool is pretty much always going to feel like the outsider because everyone else is playing by society's rules and the fool plays by the cosmos rules. Key card, no, this is four. Four, the beginning of the culmination of the influences. And this is the seven of wands. This is, you need to have some boundaries. Okay, you need to create some space, whether it's space to get away from other people and their influence, or you need to um, not let other people um, decide how you're gonna live your life, whether you need to take, take a little break from certain relationships, but you need to maintain healthy boundaries in order to be successful this week. That's always good to remember. Could be financial boundaries too. There's a lot of astrology that can indicate being very wasteful with money and I wouldn't recommend that. I never recommend that, but especially right now with the astrology. Key card, quarter of the future is to remember that you've started. Okay? You've already initiated, right? That you've taken some steps, you've made some progress and don't forget that you have made some progress. I know it often feels like on the path of being a human, Two steps forward, 25 steps back, but that's not true. You have made some progress. And we can see, wow, Knight of Wands, you took some action last week and you're starting to see the fruits of those actions. On the other side, we've got karma, judgment. Some decisions need to be made. Paired with the Knight of Wands. No, wait, wait, that's not true. Next card goes above. All right, near future, King of Swords. So again, you have to make some decisions, you have to take some actions, but you have to be like the king of swords. And this is the spreadsheet king, man. He is not going to, you know, meditate and check in with his guides. He's going to make a list of pros and cons. He's going to be really strategic. He's going to use his brain and you are going to use yours. I also realize that you have the power to make these choices too, right? King energy is like everyone's looking to you, right? The universe looks to you to decide what you want. And if you don't decide, then it can't act on your behalf. It cannot help you. So you have to make choices. I know that's hard. Really, I do. All right. Modifiers of the King of Swords. On the first side, we have Ace of Pentacles. So either some money incoming or a new way for you to create income or a new home or something new that's in your daily life, like a real actual concrete thing. On the other side... Three of Pentacles, continued work on whatever it is that you have been working on, all right? So this is showing that you already started something. This is, the other side is starting something new. You know, maybe a new phase of something, but like a, a new beginning of, of sorts. Paired with that, we have the Four of Pentacles. Now, you have this new beginning, but it doesn't mean you throw everything at it, right? Be conservative, be uh, strategic, again, be wise. Don't tell everybody, all right? Sometimes... Sometimes you have to let things kind of gestate inside yourself, right? So be very cognizant of what, um, you know, how the earth works, right? Oh, interesting. And over with the three of pentacles, we have the queen of swords. So this thing that you've been working on, you may need to edit the way you've been doing it. You may need to be a little bit more disciplined, a little bit more 
um, um, you know, mindful about your approach, a little bit more of, uh, you know, a, 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 just a, a Virgo. I, I mean, I just always think of her as the Virgo, right? Be a Virgo and not in the self-defeating critical way. <laughs> Do it in the like, oh man, everybody needs a Virgo to see the best way to get something done. All right, our two possible outcomes. First, we have justice. Justice is blind, okay? This is the fairness, equity, um, you know, things coming forward because of what you have done. And also because you have decided what the most balanced approach is to the way you're going to do things, right? This new beginning. On the other side, we've got the king of cups. All right, so this now brings in this potential for healing, this potential for bringing in more of an emotional response, more of an intuitive approach. Once you get things lined up, once you get the structure created, then you can dive into intuition on how to move forward from there. Here's the queen of cups, very interesting. This uh, is a powerful week. Um, over here paired with justice. So the queen of cups over here with justice, again, once you do the practical stuff, then you tune into the intuitive, then you check in with your guides, then you really sit with where you're going and where to go next. Paired with the king of cups, we have temperance, be moderate, be balanced. And so interesting, both sides have, you know, the, the judgment side has the three of pentacles, the queen of swords, and then the king of cups and temperance. Also of balance over here, we've got the queen of cups and justice. So there's going to be a lot of weighing out of options this week, right? And so start out with very practical, intellectual, you know, you're either really doing the earth plane way or you're really doing the mental work over here, right? So you're either actually taking physical concrete actions or you're doing a lot of mental activity with this other option. Both lead to healing, both lead to positive outcomes. Um, so it really depends on where you're at in your process and which one of these pathways feels resonant for the week. Well, I hope that was useful and helpful. Please comment if it was, and I will see you next week.